Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Here we are in early August, and I know many of us are thinking ahead to the end of the growing season. And I know there are many gardeners who would be more than happy to hang up their tools at that point and call it good, but not me. I know how to grow vegetables through the fall and winter months without using any supplemental heat here in my Zone 5B garden. It's simple to do whether you have a hoop house or just a regular garden bed. So I'm going to show you how today because it's time to get it started. As many of you know, I have been doing this for several years now and I've learned a lot through trial and error. Mostly error, but we'll get into that later. I really wanted to know if we could extend our growing season because it's a short one and we have brutal winters here. It can get down to minus 20 and also we get a lot of snow. So we're talking some very challenging conditions to overcome. What I did was I chose one of our raised beds, I prepared the soil, and then I planted some cool season crops because that seemed like the right thing to do. I chose carrots, lettuce, bunching onions, and spinach. I watered them in well, kept an eye on them, and once the temperature started to drop where we were going to get some frost, I put some hoops over the bed and I put a layer of floating row cover over the top. That gives them a few degrees of frost protection. So that worked well for a few weeks and then when the temperatures really started to drop, I also added a layer of clear plastic just to give them a little more warmth. And so that worked well too. The plants really struggled, but they did make it through the entire winter. So it's a very simple, viable approach to growing a winter garden. With one exception, and that is to choose extra cold tolerant plants, which I'll talk about later. But it gave me some encouragement to try again. However, we changed things up a little bit, which really made a big difference. The game changer for us was the building of this hoop house. My husband Bill designed and built it and it has worked so well for us. It is 10 feet wide by 9 feet long and it fits perfectly over two of our raised beds which is a great size for a winter garden. It is covered with 6 millimeter greenhouse plastic and if you're interested to see how it went together or a supply list just go to my blog and do a search on Hoop House Project and you'll learn everything you need to know. But the thing I want to point out is even though this works so well for us, it's important to understand that you don't have to do anything this fancy. But I will say this definitely makes things easier. One of the things that I learned from Elliot Coleman, who has written some books about growing year around, is that if you put floating row cover over raised beds and then cover the beds with something like this, you bump up your hardiness zone level by two. And so instead of being in zone five, it puts us in zone seven. And again, we have a very cold winter, so maybe it's more like it puts us into zone six, but it really does make a difference. One thing I wanted to point out is that the hoop house is going to be moved to a new location because it's been in its current location for a year and we're really good about rotating our crops. Now the hoop house was designed to be portable. It's a bit heavy but we have a method that makes it very easy to move. So once the corn that you see in the foreground and the tomatoes have finished growing we can move it. And also, it's going here, and you'll notice in the foreground there is the melon bed, and so they have to finish growing and producing too. But I do have one bed that I can prepare now, and I can plant it, and then I'll just have to wait for the melons to finish growing. When you pick a spot for your winter garden, make sure you choose an area that's nice and sunny. Now I'm shooting this in early morning and there's a pine tree in the way so the sun is just about coming over. But this bed gets a lot of light and it's quite open to the south of here. Think about how the sun is going to be lower in the sky during the fall and winter months. Sunlight is absolutely crucial for your plants to grow well. 
Now I like to start my seeds indoors ahead of time for a couple of very good reasons. One is that I have controlled conditions indoors, which means I get great germination and that's awesome. The other thing is we sometimes have critters that love to nibble on freshly sprouted seeds and so they get off to a horrible start. So this way, starting them indoors, I give them a fighting chance. But you certainly could either purchase seedlings from a nursery and plant them directly in here, or you could start your seeds directly in the bed. So whatever works best for you and your circumstances. What I've done with this bed is I have gently loosened the soil for the top two or three inches. I like to use a spading fork and I just poke it in and kind of wiggle it a little bit. I never turn the soil all over because that damages the structure of the soil. And there's different types of organisms that live in different layers of the soil. So I want to disturb them as little as possible. And because the things I'm growing are going to need a lot of nitrogen, I decided to add in a bit of chicken manure to the soil to get that nitrogen source to them. Another possibility would be to use some organic compost. That would work awesome. So I've got this bed all ready to go and I've put our drip irrigation system back in place. So what about watering? That's a question I get asked quite a lot and it has a twofold answer. If you have a drip irrigation system or a soaker hose or a sprinkler or some type of a system for getting your plants watered, then you're going to be doing that until you have to turn off your watering system for the winter. But then it goes beyond that you will find that the soil will occasionally dry out and so you'll want to bring water to the bed just until the temperatures get cold enough to where a lot of condensation forms on the inside of the plastic sheeting because what will happen at that point is those drips go down onto the plants in the soil and it's like an automatic watering system. So it works really well. But yes, you do need to keep the soil moist just until you hit that point where it's willing to water it for you. Now, if you live in an area with a cold climate like I do, you owe it to yourself to choose exceptionally cold tolerant vegetables and varieties so that you will be very successful. So let me show you what I'm talking about. There are some seed catalogs that do a great job of identifying which vegetables and specific varieties are really cold tolerant. And one such example is Johnny's Selected Seeds. And I swear I'm not getting a kickback for sharing this with you, but I just wanna give you an idea of something to look for. What Johnny's does is they use a little snowflake icon, which means exceptionally cold tolerant. And so if you look for things like that in seed catalogs, you will find what you're looking for. In this case, this is a type of corn salad or mush which you might not be familiar with, but I've been growing it for years and it's absolutely delicious in salads. And I love the idea of trying new things. So consider expanding your horizons as you pick some really cold tolerant plants to grow in your winter garden. So here are some things that I'll be growing this winter. On the right is mosh or corn salad, and on the left is miner's lettuce or claytonia. That is another one that was new to me a few years ago and it is absolutely delicious. I'll also be growing kale this year and I'm always careful to choose cold tolerant varieties. Vates is considered to be the most cold tolerant. And then other types of kale that have B-O-R on the end of the name are also cold tolerant. So in this case, dark boar, there's also winter boar and red boar. For the past couple of winters, I have been growing matador spinach. It is extremely cold tolerant and absolutely delicious. But on the right, I also have a seed packet. I don't know if I should even attempt to pronounce it, but it looks like it's Monstru de Virofle, and it is frost tolerant. So I thought I could try that this year as well and just see how long it lasts in the garden. You might think that lettuce is a little borderline for growing in a winter garden, but it has done amazingly well for me. So I'm going to grow four different cultivars, Red Romaine, Flashy Troutback, Bronze Beauty, 
and Little Jim. Just in case you're new to seed starting, I thought I would quickly go through the steps for you. Start with clean containers, either a seedling flat that has holes in the bottom for drainage, or these little pony pack units that have drainage holes in them as well. I have found for starting lettuce, it's much easier to fill this with a soilless mix and just plant rows of the lettuce in here rather than using these little inserts within the flat. Use either a germination mix or a seed starting mix, which is sterile, and pre-moisten it before you fill your containers. It should have the amount of moisture that you would expect to feel in a wrung out sponge. Fill your container with about two inches of the seed starting mix and then just press it down so it's a nice firm planting bed. Plant your seeds at the depth indicated on the seed packet. In the case of lettuce, that is one quarter inch deep. And then give them a little drink. That's just to make sure they have plenty of moisture for sprouting. One extra step I like to do is to sprinkle on some finely milled sphagnum moss over the surface of the soil. This prevents a nasty fungal disease called damping off. It's a natural material, so I'm going organic. And you can find it at garden centers and online. The next step is to place either a clear plastic lid or a clear plastic bag over your planting. And the purpose of both of these is to increase the amount of humidity, which helps again with the sprouting or germination of the seeds. Now these will not require light for the first few days, but once they start sprouting, you want to either put them into a nice sunny location or under a grow light. Once the majority of the seeds have germinated, that's when you take off the lid because you want to decrease the amount of humidity and then just monitor the moisture of the soil to make sure it doesn't dry out. I would recommend letting your seedlings grow for about three weeks indoors before you move them out to your winter garden. But while they're indoors, definitely give them some fish fertilizer or some other type of a liquid nitrogen fertilizer, and that is to promote the leafy growth. I like to use half strength. So if the information on the label says use one tablespoon to a gallon of water, I would use half a tablespoon to a gallon of water. Well, that's the basics on growing a fall and winter garden. And I do hope you'll give it a try because you just can't beat having your own salad greens in the dead of winter. Happy gardening.